welcome to Stories and Songs, a series of interviews with musicians from the world of jazz and improvisation. I'm Sophia Carbonara, and it's my great pleasure today to be talking to Zoe Freider. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Zoe. Thank you for joining us. Oh, um, thank you so much for inviting me along. A pleasure. Um, my first question, what have been the pivotal events in your musical journey? Pivotal events. So I've been having a bit of a think about this um, as I'm driving around places in my car. Um I guess there's a couple, there's like a really early memory of, you know, being like that kind of preschool age and doing like, you know, in a circle, clapping rhythms and reading rhythms and just being from an early age involved in, you know, music in some form. Um, and I remember just loving rhythms and the way they looked on the paper. Um, so I remember that being a really vivid memory. And then from there, it kind of just having a go at different instruments and what they kind of, you know, the different ways of learning. And I was really enjoying learning some classical theory. Um, I think the next most pivotal moment that kind of led me to starting bass was um, I became really unwell towards the end of year 10 at school. And so I ended up having to, I started year 11, but had to kind of basically not finish school, but what I did instead was I just started listening to a lot of music and Motown music in particular and remembering just, wow, what is this? And doesn't the bass part sound so cool? Like whoever's on bass must be having a ball. So um, I just remember that being a really kind of light bulb moment of going, wow, I really want to try out bass. I want to play bass. And fortunately enough, my dad had a little Fender short scale bass Um in his collections of instruments. And um, so I started playing bass. So I didn't get to kind of finish school, but I learned bass. And within a few months, I was kind of up doing some gigs. And then that kind of led to going to uni where I lived in Mackay and then onwards to kind of the Canberra School of Music and then to Melbourne. And so that was a really, I think, important moment where I kind of discovered what instrument was probably going to be the one that I spent a lot of my musical time doing. So um, yeah, that was a really good moment. And I think the other one is just when I was at university, um, the kind of opportunity to start composing and writing music and, and just realising um, how much I enjoyed that and, um, yeah, and then kind of just growing those skills and then starting my band in about 2000 and what was it, 2000 and something, early kind of 2010, 2011, Um and writing music and just that kind of feeling of writing and getting people to play it and the joy that that, you know, brought me was a really amazing thing. So I think discovering my instrument through Motown and then discovering this amazing way of being able to communicate through things you write and then people interpret it, interpret them and it comes to life in some amazing way. So I think think those couple of things are the, the key moments that I remember at the moment, yeah. It was beautiful. Um, my second question, what obstacles have you had to overcome during your musical life and how have you dealt with them? Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes there's, there's ones you forget and there's ones that you remember. Um, I think some of the main ones is probably initially the obstacle of pursuing my music career was kind of moving across the country. So there was only kind of, there was limited resources where I grew up in Queensland. So I kind of made this big trip to, you know, to the ANU, the Canberra School of Music, and I didn't know anybody. I had no kind of support networks and and that was pretty scary. But I think I overcome that, overcame that rather by just, um, just absorbing and just going, you know, full into the deep end of how much can I learn and just being a bit of a sponge and distracting myself from being homesick basically but you know it worked out pretty well I, I really had a great time and um met a lot of amazing musicians that I still know to this day who I really admire and um so that was one major obstacle of just being able to you know kind of have to go on this big adventure but kind of learn to cope and grow up pretty fast on my own um so music definitely you know spending lots of hours in my room practicing definitely distracted me from that but also I got good at my instrument, <laughs> so it's kind of a, a good thing. Um, yeah, some of the obstacles I found just in in generally in the music um, industry, always kind of feeling like I was a little bit 
sometimes if I've even been called a bit of a novelty, which today is like, ah, oh, that's not cool, but just not seeing many people like myself um, up there doing music or being instrumentalists or, you know, it's very a male-dominated industry from my experience, you know, even to this day. Like I've seen a lot of changes, but, yeah, not really having that many role models that I could go, hey, they're doing that and that's possible. And and I've as I've grown up, I've definitely met more and more amazing people that I've really looked up to. Um, and Andrea Keller is one of those people. I just go, wow, that's, you know, how does she do that? Um, and she works damn hard, I'm sure. But, yeah, just, you know, kind of just the obstacle going, well, I don't see too many other people doing what I'm doing, but I'm just going to try my best and I'm going to try really hard and just keep doing it because that's what I love to do. So that was something that I just thought, well, maybe it can be, especially I think through teaching and, and having some diversity with the types of people I teach, it's great to to just kind of feel like maybe... I don't know if there's just different people and there's more different people in in a in an industry. I think it's a really good thing. So just seeing, wanting to see more of that was a little bit of an obstacle early on. Um, and then lastly, without this sounding negative, but you know when I became a mum, as amazing as that was, it was a really tricky juggling act of, you know, because I'm kind of the personality that goes all in this way or all in that way. It's like how do I how do I be a mum? How do I be a musician? How do I be a creative person? But you know, um, just the mechanics of everyday stuff with with little children. So, yeah, that was definitely um, a challenge. But then I discovered how amazing, even more amazing it is to play music. I appreciate it so much more because it's a special moment that I connect with others. And it's nice to show my kids that I get to do that. I'm kind of proud to, you know, explain to them or show them. They come along and sit behind me at gigs and whatever. So it was a little bit of an obstacle to try and get my brain around it, but it's definitely been an amazing thing to share with them as well. Um, my third question for you. Do you have a motto or personal philosophy that guides you or what advice would you share with your musicians? I think, I think as I, and I think this is something I've learned as I've, as I've, matured and just been doing what I do for a longer period of time but you're not not being not being competitive or you know comparing myself to others actually being really comfortable in I'm really good at this this is what I do and you know there's a uniqueness about what we all do and just embracing that and not feeling like I'm always having to um I don't know kind of do all these things that other people might do really well, but just be kind of really comfortable in what my strengths are. And it's good to know what your weaknesses are. There's always room to to learn and and grow as an artist. But yeah, just being more learning to be more comfortable and accepting of what what things I do well and being okay with the things that I don't do well. It's like a really nice place just to be like, yep, that's cool. I'm not such a great slap basis, but I can really like, you know, get around the instrument and I love improvising for example so yeah just kind of I think striving to to I guess um you know just learn more about your craft but at the same time just being okay with what you do and enjoying it and I think being able to ultimately share that and connect with others that's I found a real joy in that so I'd, I would probably you know a bit of a motto is just enjoy the moment and enjoy that amazing ability to connect with people because it's such a, you know, it's such a pretty special, precious way to do that through music. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Um, my final question for you or request is for you to nominate a song and album of your own creation for us to listen to and and let us know what, what that means to you or what's the story of that. Sure. Um, so there's one, there's kind of two songs, but one in particular a song called Yellow is for Sunshine, which I wrote um, a little while ago. Um, and, yeah, it was kind of it was kind of the beginning, the debut of my, of my ensemble that I was preparing all this music and wrote all this music for. And the deadline was coming up and it's like, oh, I need, I need another song. And I talked to her, I was talking to a really good family friend who was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's about writing a song for, sometimes we talk about this thing about the child within, that little person within that's always there, they have needs, um, they need attention. So I ended, I ended up writing this song called Yellow for Sunshine 
pretty much from that place of that little child within. And it was just a really joyous, simple but beautiful song that I'm super proud of. But I think the most thing, yeah, the biggest thing that that's come about from that song is I've had some really good friends and other people connect with it in moments throughout their life, whether it's through grief or it's through, you know, just something joyful that's happened in their life. And they've often, sometimes they've come to me and said, oh, I really thought of that song or I connected with that song. And I think, um, yeah, I think to be able to write a song that you can share with others um, has been a pretty, um, yeah, a pretty amazing thing to to have kind of just created in some way. But, um, yeah, being able to play that with others too just brought a lot of, um, a lot of good feelings, a lot of joy, basically. <laughs> um, and the other one, I just remember writing this song called Steely by Nature. And I think that was special because it's just that thing about sometimes, um, you know, just knuckling down and trudging through whatever hard stuff you've got to do and just, um, yeah, just, just pushing through to, to, to where you want to go to as hard as that might seem at times a bit of steely by nature got me through. And um, I like to write songs about different, <laughs> different feelings, um, but those two songs in particular, and I think steely by nature is one that they might've added recently to um, one of the, the high school lists. So that was pretty cool. Hopefully some other people get to enjoy it. I, I was always pretty bass heavy, you know, gave the bass players lots to do. <laughs> I love that. I'm so looking forward to listening to this music as well. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much for your time and your wisdom. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me.